What is the most powerful weapon US military has? We're not talking about nuclear, just conventional warfare. It's not its fighters, it's not its tanks, it is an aircraft carrier. Today we're going to watch a video about, not a video, a movie basically, about USS Ronald Reagan. This thing is huge. It's not the biggest one, but it's huge. Over 5,000 people work on it. The city where I lived in Estonia, or you could call it the town, whatever, had 4,000 people in it. So this carrier is bigger than my hometown. In the Estonian soldier hat competition, you guys have ordered the hats and some of the hats are going to the aircraft carriers actually. So in this competition, if you're getting the hat from the carrier, I'll put it separately. I'll, put the ca I'll write the name of the carrier on the board. I think it deserves it. United States can project its force thanks to its aircraft carriers. They're the way for the US US to control the skies and the sea anywhere they go. South China Sea, Pacific, whichever ocean, whichever sea. They probably wouldn't sail up the river, so they cannot go inland, I guess. But imagine you're seeing a huge aircraft carrier sailing up the river, filled with planes ready to attack at a moment's notice. This video is going to be very long, so go and get some food. Get this Sony YouTuber cup, get some drink, get some snacks. Let's learn about your military. But before we go, we have three new patrons who support this channel. Being a YouTuber is not a regular job and you need some side help. It's not like you have a contract with Google for fixed income. No, it fluctuates up and down. So patrons are that. Patrons make it possible for me to do this without worrying too much. We have Zachary Gibson. Thank you for becoming a patron. We have RSG Connor. I've said your name already. You have become a patron before, so I guess you cancelled and became it again. Well, thank you again for becoming a patron. And we have Yames Renner. I'm saying Yames, that's an Estonian pronunciation. It's James, of course. Thank you, Mr. Renner, for becoming a patron. If you want to support the channel, Please do, be my guest. The link is in the description below. Let's jump on board the USS Ronald Reagan, my friends. They have assembled here from the four corners of the Earth. 55 warships, among them the newest and most sophisticated ever produced. Is that the somewhat? The United States is here. Great Britain, India, Japan. Canada, France, Australia, Germany, 26 nations altogether. Each will introduce the latest naval technology in their arsenals. Twenty-two thousand men and women will be tested over the coming month across a vast expanse of ocean covering thousands of square miles. I guess it's some kind of an exercise the allied NATO countries do together. Maybe it's virtual, maybe not. Oh, cool. <laughs> the command center and flagship of the operation is the nuclear powered supercarrier. A model of modern engineering. Powered supercarrier. Nimitz class, yes. Baby, yes. It is ginormous. It's called Rim of the Pacific, the world's largest and most complex naval exercise. It will be as close to actual war. Oh, so Rim of the Pacific is an exercise, and they uh, they are training, I guess, together to make the cooperation better between NATO countries. Warfare as is peacefully possible. They began to appear nearly 5,000 years ago in the Mediterranean Sea. But we're going back to history now. They were the largest and most glorious moving objects known to mankind. 5,000 years ago, aircraft carriers were huge. The biggest ships mankind had ever seen. Fighters were made by Stone Age men and they dropped stone from heavens to the godless peoples of the West. Now, I don't understand the history jump here, but I guess it has something to do with the story, so let's all enjoy this and watch and learn. Powered by oars, 
Their tactics were simple. They rammed and sank enemy ships. This is where it all began. The soldiers on board carried only bows, arrows, and spears. Yet great battles ensued. Raging for weeks, there was often the loss of hundreds of ships and thousands of men. For centuries to come... For the longest of time, it was Britain, Spain and France who were contesting to rule the world with their navy. Britain won since 1901, I think it was. The beginning of the 20th century, the United States have, has possessed the biggest navy in the world. And I think at the time of these photos, maybe Roman wars with Cartago, the country, I don't know how you call it in English, then the Romans had the biggest navy and the Chinese dynasty, dynasties had the biggest navy. We're going way back here. Now cut the intro. Aircraft carrier. Oh, look at this beautiful thing. The modern supercarrier oh. remains at sea for months at a time and is home for over 5,000 personnel. Five a virtual thousand. city at sea. Do they have McDonald's? I want to know if they have McDonald's. If they do, I might consider going to work on one. All right, Con, let's go. Uh, let's go 360. Let's go 15 knots. Gotta get us up the box on time. So. The captain is from an elite group that has over 25 years of naval aviation experience. To be a cap captain of this, it's, it's like being a governor of a, an entire city, to be a captain of this carrier. Smaller cities have mayors, and he's like the mayor of a floating city, if you can put it that way. Hey, so just, just let the, the helos know, territorial waters are only uh, eight miles to the east. Yep, thanks. Okay. Degrees, 92 fixed wing aircraft and helicopters are readied for a month of intense flight ops as demanding as combat itself. Those wearing green shirts maintain airframes and engines. Red shirts are responsible for ammo and weapons. It's color coded. Cool. You, know, you think of Popeye and you think of a really strong, you know, U.S. sailor that you want to represent yourself as. And I think we all use them as a role model today. Purple shirts, or grapes, fuel grapes. the aircraft. Grapes. Air crew are now manning up for the event seven. Case three launch, case three recovery. The temperature is 68 degrees, the altimeter 2996. This is a huge, huge system. Everybody has to work together perfectly for, to make this work. It's, the, it's not a work of one man. The captain might be leading it, but he needs all of the people to rely upon with his communications to, to make this thing work, to make this thing move. You cannot even, I guess, move it. If you turn the wheel, I think many people have to do something for this ship to turn at the right direction. As one man, I don't think you can do anything on this ship. It's a huge, it's the biggest teamwork there is. Wow, look at this. You have no idea how many times I had to write the United Kingdom, for example, because I messed it up all the time. I make so many mistakes. So this is, uh, I am, pr I'm proud of myself. I actually am. The Estonian soldier hat competition, the new layout. I hope this looks better than the old one. It's more organized. No states are twice on the board now. I fixed it. I added up all the points. It's all fair and honest and beautiful. Let's go on with the competition. My friends, this competition also helps my channel. When YouTube revenue goes down, I rely on Patreons and selling merch. This is my job. And I, also, I don't live from this. I actually am a musician also. I have two jobs, if you believe it or not. I'm a musician and a YouTuber, and YouTube goes down, I'm a merch seller, I don't know what I am. Just trying to make buy like all of you, I guess. All that being said, thank you for getting the hats. We have Rick Gitzenberg, Gitzenberg. A very German name, I think. Not German, Netherlands. Yeah, it doesn't go to the US, it goes to Netherlands. 
Oh, we have Netherlands. Don't worry, I'll just add a point. Two points for Netherlands. UK and Canada are leading with three points. So Netherlands, if you get one more, you'll be up there. We have Francisco Torres. Francisco, we would say in Estonian, because we don't have that name here. Also, I know you. You have uh, popped up on this channel before, so uh, a reappearing name. Thank you for getting that. Odessa is the name of the city. Odessa is a very old city near Europe's borders, but this one is in USA. Washington. Not the DC though. Washington has 10. It needs a little bit of boost to get up there with Texas and Arizona. 11 for Washington, baby. We have Christopher Popa. Mr. Popa. Hey, you wanna be my papa? Oh my god, that's so weird. Sorry, no, don't don't be my papa, no. The city is called Marvel and it's in Missouri. Missouri has two, soon to be three. Three, baby, oh yeah. I truly sound like Austin Powers, I'm not kidding. Oh yeah, baby. If you guys are too young to know who Austin Powers is, then I understand. It was a movie in the 90s and 80s. We have Mark Bauer. Oh yeah, all of the names will be pronounced in Estonian, so I will be butchering them on purpose. Mark Bauer is from Hillsborough, New Jersey. Six points for New Jersey, yes, and now we will have our final point. Also disclaimer, I have not yet added, re-added all of the states of the day with the green line. I will do it. All of the states will be the same, the states of the day. I just haven't done it yet because I, I got so fed up with drawing, I'm so bad at it. But I will do it, don't worry. Finally, we have Italiano name, Ita Mr. Italiano. Gianpaolo Masucci. Gianpaolo Masucci. Pizza Margarita. My Italian expressions are perfect. Don't come saying they're bad. He got the hat to New York, but he wrote to me that he wants the point to go to the old country, to Italy. Because he doesn't want to let down his origins, so Italy will get the point. Mr. Paolo, don't worry about it. Okay, I'm offending a lot of people right now. Alright, I'll just add Italy. See, I made it too big now, there's no room for the points. That's what I'm talking about. I make a uh, white. I make a mistake, I have to take it all down. One point for Italiano, pizza margarita, eh, pepper bapper, Ah, don't worry about it, forget about it. This was the Stone and Soldier Hat competition. If you're new to this, if you have skipped it and gave it a shot right now, and you think something should be different, please let me know. This competition is very important to me. It actually allows me to live, if you can believe it or not. So, to illustrate how much it means to me. So, I very much want you to be satisfied with it. So, let me know in the comments what, what you like or what you don't like. Thank you for getting the hats. Back to the video. The density altitude, 940 feet. On the Ford Walk, Crews are looking for anything that might get sucked into an engine as the aircraft take off. Pilots have been killed by almost invisible nuts and bolts. Really? That's what they do, okay. Victory. I have to react to Pratt Paddle of Trafalgar. I need to, this is cool. From the triumph at Trafalgar grew a worldwide British Empire that would last another century. Whoa! Control of the high seas requires a mastery of the most advanced possible technology. I love it, I love it, I love it. Cool shots. Deep in the heart of the ship sit two uranium-powered nuclear reactors. Essentially miniature suns, these radioactive furnaces boil water to create high-pressure steam that spins giant turbines. It's crazy how nuclear reactors actually are still steam engines, like in the industrial era where they burned coal to boil water to make steam to make steam turbines moving. Well, this same thing happens here only with nuclear fission or fusion, I don't know which one it is. So it's the same thing as industrial revolution, only high-tech, you could say that. Now, uh, my friends, I'm sorry if I pause this much. I get very excited for these things and I love this topic. So I hope you like this style. If you don't, put it in the comments. I'll read it. I'll take your feedback into consideration for sure. You can put it in the comments. The carrier's eight electric generators 
could easily power a city of a hundred thousand people. Hundred thousand. Using massive reduction gearboxes, the turbines also turn four mammoth propeller shafts that drive the ship at around 35 knots. Whoa. Its top speed remains highly classified. Cool. With regular maintenance, they can run continuously without refueling for 20 years. 20 years! 20 years without refueling. You know what? I've seen it in a movie. What was it? World War Z? If zombie apocalypse happens, this is the best place to be. If the world is contaminated by a uh, zombie virus, a T virus or a Z virus, whichever it is, you go to the aircraft carrier. These things can stay on sea and there's no virus anywhere. And you can... It's weaponized, baby. You can shoot... You can get your Z whiz and, you know, machine gun down some of those zombies with seven, 70 shots per second. Yeah, baby. That's American way to stay away from the zombies. Look at all of those colors working together. Teamwork. Nice. Collaboration. Camaraderie. Hell Still yeah. mentally and physically fit are all critical among the crew of a smooth running ship. Every one of the 5,212 personnel is integral in the success of the operation. No tiny detail is left to chance. Well, they lift the planes. Blue shirts position and secure the aircraft on the deck, making sure they are presented for launch in the right order. Training has been continuous since the very first carriers were launched more than a century ago. The battle group commander is responsible for the coordination of all 26 nations during the exercise. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we had ships from... Patience, communication, and diplomacy were not the hallmarks of legendary admirals, but in an increasingly complex and lethal world, they are critical. And they want to help. I don't know much about Navy. I was an infantryman, a communications guy, and I, I usually was, you know, boots on ground, gun in my hand, listen to the radio from the battalion and uh, relay it to the companies, relay it to the squads and platoons. That's what I did. Also, at the same time, I had to protect the company leader, you know, that was my task also. I know nothing about the ranks in the Navy. Admiral and Captain. Which one is higher? Admiral or Captain? This is an admiral. Very cool to see that it's a woman admiral. I like it. So you can explain those ranks to me in the comments below if you want to put the time into it. Another, another thing, Estonian Navy is hand-me-downs. It really is. Swedish uh, naval forces and German naval forces, everyone who is allied with us and uh, have renewed their navy, have given us their old ships and that's our navy. So it's basically nothing. If we would have one aircraft carrier, I think Russia would think twice before invading us. We don't have any. We don't have any tanks also. We have nothing. We have just people with guns. We have people with guns and trucks. And me inside those trucks. Yeah, that's what we have. We need an aircraft carrier. Can you send it to us via uh, mail, please? And give their navies a chance to shine. Uh, no, I think what I want to do is come a little bit more to starboard and uh, instead of emerging the fog, let's get through this, come up at speed 20 knots. The Japanese on the starboard and then the Canadians are coming up. Oh, they're, they're just behind it, right? Uh, yes, sir. The carrier, as the flagship, is responsible for getting 55 vessels from all over the world organized and sailing together in reasonable order.
USS Independence, that, that's already looks like one of those new stealth ships like Zumwalt. They're really expensive to make and uh, they're invis invisible to the radar and stealth is what costs. Yeah, you don't have these massive guns on top of it, like old school battleships, but you cannot spot these ships on radar. And radar is the only way you see ships, so these ships are invisible, they are nasty. America. People's Republic of China, why why is China there taking part of the Pacific Rim exercise? With NATO? NATO is against Russia and China. What the hell? Or I'm missing something in the international policy here, but what? A surprise, a surprise for me. Whoa, they have hospital ships. Whoa. This kind of international cooperation was inconceivable even a hundred years ago. Look at this picture. By the beginning of the 20th century, the giant guns of dreadnoughts, or battleships, would dwarf the cannons of Trafalgar. As the First World War began, Britain had a significant edge over Germany in both ships and guns, and did not expect to be challenged. But in June of 1916, 250 British and German ships engaged off the coast of Jutland in the North Sea. 200 modern battleships, what? I need to react to that battle. Battle of Jutland, Jutland, whatever it is, Jutland. I wanna see that. There's so many things I need to watch. Let me, let me know guys if you want me to see that. I wanna watch things that you like. So if you don't, not interested, I'm not going to. This is Britain versus Germany, First World War. Very interesting. 200 ships. It would come to be known as the greatest battleship duel of all time. Oh, yeah. 14 British and 11 German ships were sunk. More British ships. 8,500 young men were killed. You put so much money into a ship and it is sunk just like that, in, in, unrecoverable back then. It's the fastest way to lose money as a country and to lose military power. You lose your navy, you're, you're gone, you're out of the war. The militaries need the protection of their force by their navy all over the place. And if they don't have the navy, it's gone. And you can destroy someone's navy with seconds if you're good. Japan tried to do it to the US in Pearl Harbor. And you can see a ship going down right here. It's a huge, expensive piece of metal. Just a few minutes and it's gone. Incredibly fast way to lose everything. The most expensive poker game there is. Look at the people. They're on top of that ship. The age of the battleship had come to an end in less than two hours of fighting. Modern defense systems are evolving at an accelerating pace, questioning the wisdom of expensive new procurement, challenging the status quo. So there are three carriers right here, right? One, two, and three right on top of each other here. The second one is tiny and the third one is also small, but the first one is huge. That's supposed to be Ronald Reagan, I think. All of the fleet following it and we don't see the submarines right now. They are underwater, I guess. This is an, uh, enough force here to take down a coastal country. Let's take a country that has a Britain or a Chile or countries that have huge coastlines. The, this force can just penetrate the, even the aerial space over land. And these ships shoot quite far. So this army group right here could take down nations. Powerful as hell. Uh, I am amazed.
The goal of RIMPAC is, in part, to test and integrate advances in weapons technology. It gives crews a chance to perfect their skills under battle-like conditions. The operation of the aircraft bombs. carrier is in itself nearly okay. as dangerous as actual combat, and everyone on board is well aware of that. Yeah, you always see those uh, rockets and missiles uh, attached to fighters, but actually it's, it's, it's a job that takes time and precision and training. Look how heavy one of those is. You cannot even lift it with two men. You need wires, steel wires to do that. You, you never think about this stuff until you see it on board. And I, I know a lot of you guys are actually working on top aircraft tra craft carriers and maintenance. I've heard a lot of you and, and read your comments that you're from maintenance, you, you're repairing the planes or, or doing this stuff. And now I see what you do, it's interesting. Thank you for your service and for your hard work. Modern fighter aircraft like the F-18 Super Hornet can lock on and intercept enemy aircraft long before visual contact. It has a, a Gatling gun. Guns that look like they might belong on a World War I biplane. F-18 has a Gatling gun? Have I forgotten about this? I've watched a video about the Hornet. Hey, I made a joke that you should put a railgun and a minigun on, I don't know, F-35 or the newest sixth generation fighter, but F-18 has one. I love it. Look how beautiful it is. I think mini Gat Gatling guns are sexy. I think so. Even in an age of advanced missiles, pilots must still prepare for the unlikely prospect of an old-fashioned dogfight. Oh yeah, for sure. Against MiGs and China's J-20. Launching a 37,000-pound F-18 Super Hornet off a carrier may look simple, but bad weather enemy fire and accidents all contribute to very real danger. After a century of trial and error, one launch system has proved robust and reliable. Below deck are tanks of high-pressure steam from the nuclear-powered boilers. They provide explosive expansion power to pistons sitting in 300-foot-long tubes. Oh, like shells waiting in the barrel of a gun. What? Once released, the power of the piston can launch an aircraft with the force of four Gs, catapulting the plane from zero to 160 miles an hour in just three seconds. Three seconds! Zero to 160 miles an hour, three seconds! You put that system to an S-Class, please do it. You get the fastest car in the world, please. We're talking about Tesla going, uh, Tesla Roadster going zero to uh, 60 miles an hour, 2.9 seconds, the fastest car in the world. You couldn't compare it to this. Those pilots know what is speed on the ground. Amazing. I'm sorry for getting so ex excited. If this is foreign to you, then yes, I, I, I have this personality. I'm like, oh, it's amazing to me. I, I hope it doesn't bother you uh, very much. This is so cool. Put it on a car. Hey, US presidents, make a car. Elon Musk, you don't need Tesla. Put this system on a Tesla and you'll be good. One second and 60 miles an hour. Look at it go. All right. Oh. Every roll on board is critical to the exquisite ballet of launch and recovery. They can launch two planes at once. There were two, two runways, two pistons. 
But the planes that are behind, do they have to be planted on top of the pistons before they go? They cannot just start at the bottom of the aircraft carrier. They have to be wheeled in the front and then locked to the piston and then they can go, right? That's how it works. So launching all of the planes, 90 planes was it? That's, that takes a lot of time. If I calculate all of this moving the planes, it, it should take an hour or something. Launching all of them, it's a lot of work. Two, two at a time, right, okay. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, you go, baby, you go. Ooh. Look at this. This is a radar plane, right? It has a huge radar on top of it. With the landing. As exciting as the steam powered catapult launch is for the fighter pilot, a safe landing is even better. Yeah, if you land the wrong way, you'll just ride over on the, to the ocean. As this happened with modern aircraft carriers, the pistons well or what, failed or whatever. Uh, the fighter jet does not get enough speed and drops into the ocean or if they land they go over the edge these might be stupid questions for you but i'm an infantryman I, I see this for the first time i might say i've watched videos about aircraft carriers yes but this is going in depth so you can put all your knowledge in the comments below i love reading comments i don't get so many of them where i can't read them i can't read them i only have a couple of hundred and that's nothing to read so yeah, I do read all of your comments for the first three to four days in every video. I read all of the comments, for your knowledge. Well, that's explosive, that scares me. An aircraft's tail hook must snag one of four arresting cables. This braided wire weaves 900 feet through the carrier, down to an arrestor engine. As the momentum of the plane pulls on the cable, a huge piston forces hydraulic fluid in one tank against air in another, compressing the air up to 400 pounds per square inch, stopping the aircraft and pilot in just two seconds. What the hell? What if they miss? What if they, yeah, they try to land, they have to be quite precise and at the right distance from the wire for the hook to catch on to it. What if they're not at the right distance and the hook is not going to catch on, they're not going to stop and they're going to fall into the ocean? Or if they understand, oh, I didn't catch it this time, they can lift up again? Is it like that? I, I get a lot of questions with this. I'm going to pause this video much. This is my style. I hope it's okay for you. The comforting embrace of the arresting cable is regarded as among the most euphoric experiences in all of aviation. Japanese on the starboard, Normandy in front, that looks pretty good. All right, and the submarines. Who can find the submarines? Who can find the submarines? <laughs> Always the submarines. Where are the our submarines? Of the submarine is its stealth, and yeah. to its friends, lethal to its enemies. Also at RIMPAC is the new Virginia class submarine. It is 377 feet long and 34 feet wide. Speed can exceed 25 knots and potentially over 30. On board, crew number one. How fast is 35, uh, 30 and 25 knots on land? How fast can they go? I, I am assuming it's like 40 to 50 kilometers per hour, which is about 30 to 40 miles per hour. It's very fast for a ship, I think, for a huge ship like that. Also, I talked about the submarines, US versus China. I said China's diesel submarines are very loud. And you guys said there are very quiet diesel submarines. There are... Uh, 
it doesn't matter if it's diesel or nuclear, if it's built correctly, it is quiet. So it's, it's about when it's built. If it's old, it's loud. If it's new, it's quiet. So it doesn't matter if it's diesel oil or nuclear, it matters uh, which generation is it. And I know China has uh, old subs, mostly old submarines. US has a lot of new ones. And it's all about the sound, because if the enemy detects you, they usually use, uh, I don't know how it's called, but yeah, they listen to you. It's the sound how they find you. And radar. If you're invisible to those, you are unkillable. It's all about being quiet. 120 enlisted men and women, and 14 officers. Range 410 yards. Very well, This is ISO. The nuclear propulsion system produces 40,000 horsepower. A modern nuclear sub could stay underwater almost indefinitely. Almost Like an aircraft carrier, limited only by its onboard supply of food. Look at that. I am hungry right now. I'm seeing this. They're eating this on submarine meat like that. Ham. I'm hungry. I want this. As this video ends, I'm going to make food. I'm going to make delicious meat. Uh, if you are working on aircraft carrier or submarine, let me know, please. Do you get good food? This looks good, but I know militaries put this on for the cameras. Do you get ham and meat and stuff like that? If you do, I am happy for you. It makes its own fresh water for drinking and showers. I, I understand what you're saying, but we cannot risk attacking a, uh, a neutral country. They're capable of launching Mark 48 torpedoes, tactical tomahawks, harpoon missiles, and the new advanced mobile mine. More than a thousand feet of water provides a stealthy layer of protection for the submarine as it defends the carrier and other surface ships above. Like great weapons of the past, navies simply cannot afford to lose battles fought in earnest. Oh no, yeah. Nowadays you cannot do that. Despite the horrendous losses suffered by the Germans and British at Jutland, battleships reappeared in the Second World War. Much bigger and far more lethal. Enchanted with the powerful symbolism of big guns, Adolf Hitler invested heavily in battleships, including the Tirpitz and Bismarck. Bismarck, whoa, I watched a video about hunting the Bismarck. I want to see more videos about it. It's a huge, gigantic battleship that I know the British bombed it for a few hours before they could sunk it. They had to just, I think if I remember, they had to use four ships to bomb it continuously with their, all of their barrels for several hours before it sunk. It was ginormous. It was the biggest in the world, I think. Let me know if you want to see that. I want to rewatch it. The German ships were superbly built and manned. They were thought to be invincible, like the Nazis themselves. Bismarck! That's the baby! Look at it now, not invincible. The biggest ship in the world at the time. The Bismarck's rudder was damaged by light aircraft. The crippled ship was then pounded by 2,800 shells from British warships. 2,800 shells! 2,000 shells for one ship! That's what it took to take it down. That's how huge it was. Ah! Oh. Before being scuttled by the German crew. 2,100 German sailors died. Mm. As the age of the battleship was coming to a close, that of the aircraft carrier was just beginning. And submarine. And submarine. Each rim pack features emerging advanced technology, like the F-35, 
a fifth generation strike fighter. F-35, baby. Since World War II, increasingly powerful radar has been used to detect inbound enemy aircraft. With growing sophistication, modern radar has been used to lock onto enemy planes and shoot them down with guided missiles fired over the horizon beyond visual range. Yeah, to get even close to this aircraft carrier, you have to be invisible to the radars, because if they see you, as I understand, they can shoot a missile a few hundred miles away that will still lock onto you and shoot you down. So getting close to it is impossible already. And if you do get close to it, there are submarines, there is uh, battleships here, there's everything here. So taking down those aircraft carriers, mission impossible for me. Mission impossible. Also, those F-35s are stealth as hell. Much of the new fighter's advancements focus on hiding from radar with a technology called stealth. The F-35 has multiple layers of skin coating that absorb radar waves, preventing them from bouncing back to enemy radar screens. Engine intake and exhausts are specially designed to deflect and mask the jet's thermal signature, avoiding detection from heat-seeking missiles. It can carry more than 15,000 pounds of weapons externally, or more than 5,000 pounds internally, dramatically improving the F-35's stealth profile. So it's carrying its weapons internal internally, that's the huge thing. Everything is hidden inside that plane. Not like the older fighters when they have uh, everything attached to them. As I understand, maybe I'm making a mistake here, but yeah, as much as you can hide inside the body, which is self, you are less visible than on the radar. If you can just hide everything inside that uh, stealth body. And the materials they use on this plane are very expensive. Those stealth materials, I don't know what they are. They are classified, but... I'm sure they're expensive. That's what makes it so expensive, because it's stealth. The US Marine variant, the F-35B, has more than 40,000 pounds of thrust, giving pilots more raw power than any other fighter engine in history. Why, why is this open here? Look, the little thing on next to the pilot, why is it open? Shouldn't it make it harder to lift off? Might be a stupid question, but yeah, why? Look! Look, the engine, the back of the engine, or whatever the exhaust comes out, the thrusting part of the plane, that fo fo focuses down immediately as it gets off the aircraft carrier. It goes down, so it can lift the plane up even better. That's so cool. It changes direction. The U.S. Navy's version is the F-35C. Designed for carrier operations, it has larger wings with tips that fold and tougher landing gear for catapult launches and carrier arrestments. Hell yeah, baby! Hell yeah, you go! Oh! Right ground, mighty seven three airborne. Check that. Roger. The pilot's helmet displays all pertinent information, no matter where the pilot is looking. The aircraft's distributed aperture system uses six electro-optical sensors giving the pilot an unprecedented 360 degrees of situational awareness. What? What? This is so... I'm 
For you, it might be regular information, but as a pilot looking through that cam or helmet, you don't even see the cockpit. You just see the ocean or around you and the, the helmet. The future is now, guys. This is the future is now stuff, really. It blows my mind. They really have to train specially for this plane. If How much do you have to train to be a pilot of F-35? The pilot. Look at it, how cool it is. Through the aircraft itself. What? <sighs> they should have this for tank crews. People inside Abrams. They should not see the tank, but everything around them would be awesome. All the key information the pilot needs is projected onto the helmet's visor, allowing for instant coordinated response. The missile warning system sees subtle heat differences across the landscape. It's so easy to spot a soldier on a fighter plane, and it's the same with Abrams tank. Heat vision works like that. Oh my god. Yeah, me as an infantryman, we were always warned that Russians have heat vision and we are screwed if they if they use it and if we cannot hide ourselves. So I have been grown in the military with the fear of the enemy heat vision and if they can see this, I am screwed. The new strike fighter shares data seamlessly with other F-35s, but also with allied aircraft and commanders on water or land. Computer technology is so sophisticated, it can identify types of planes and nationality, and recommend what? to the pilot suggested weapons to deploy. Unbelievable, it's like a computer game, only a real. <laughs> yeah, you see those green triangles or red triangles if it's an enemy or a friendly, and it can suggest you what weapons to use. In the end, in the next generation, it will be enemy aircraft spotted. Press F to shoot down. That's what you do in Call of Duty. Well, it's gonna be the same. The pilot just presses F. I mean, plane does all the work. Yes, I'm joking, of course, but it's amazing how smart this plane is. The NASA sensors can even spot a whale, or more importantly, a submarine. On Submarines. The surface. When submarines first appeared in the theater of war, British admirals considered them unethical, the weapons of cowards who refused to fight on the surface like real men. No way. The stealthy, high-tech German submarine was regarded by some as the battleship of the future. In the early years of World War II, they had a lethal advantage in the North Atlantic. Attacking and sinking thousands of defenseless cargo ships, strangling the lifeline of the Allied war effort. Oh no, the U-boats. In desperation. Hundreds of small corvettes were hurriedly built to defend the convoys. Based on a fishing boat, they were cheap and simple. Their crews were amateurs and most often teenagers. They had the smallest guns in the Navy. Yet day and night they fought the terrible cruelty of submarine warfare, struggling to save the lives of merchant seamen. How, how are you going to fight a submarine with a Corvette? Uh, how does that work? I don't understand. Oh, depth chargers. The British, American and Canadian forces of the sea and air hurled their strength upon the U-boat. Yeah, okay, it makes an explosion, but how do you know where the submarine is? So yeah, you have depth charges, you have to, you know, lift, push them into the sea, and the submarines are on, on the side of you, on the right side, for example. How are you going to get the depth charge close to that submarine? It seems too much like a searching for the needle in the haystack.
Gradually, these and other tiny escort ships of the Canadian, British, and American navies clawed back the German advantage. Oh, it sinking works. 700 submarines and winning the largest naval battle in human history. 700? Nice! Early submarines were plagued by lack of situational awareness. Like blind mice in a cave, they knew little of what lay around them. Ship to 5-8 feet. Submerge the ship to 5-8 feet, I sir. Pilot, submerge the ship to 5-8 feet. Submerge the ship to 5-8 feet, pilot. The Virginia class's sophisticated electronic periscope and sensors allow crew members access to vital information. Hovercrafts, they hover. As much as I know, they're actually not floating. They have s spinning rotors that project the air so fast they're hovering. As much as I understand. Yeah, hovercraft. It's really cool. You can go on water, on land, everywhere. You can just kind of fly with them, but they can do anything on a surface. All great international navies, armies, and air forces into unified fighting units. Advanced electronic warfare systems can identify in detail friend from foe jam enemy assets and provide an electronic shield to cloak threatened friendly forces that is so cool this is like one of those cutscenes from modern warfare 3 or modern warfare 2 that's call of duty i haven't played the newest ones and this is now this is going on now in the world's militaries in the nato countries and the united states this is how far we are right now you can jam radars with an f-35 plane which can be anywhere at any time because of the aircraft carrier. So you can just jam anything you want. C41 lightning 7 and 3 in heading at 345 Cali target. Clear switches hot, cleared hot release on condition. Clear one switches hot. Oh, it's shooting the. Yeah, baby, yeah! Oh! Is it shooting a plane? What is it shooting at? A torpedo going, yeah, it is exploding! It's going down. See whiz. <sighs> oh, it's... Oh, yeah. Take some. I'm going to end this video here. There was 10 more minutes of this, but I'm going to end it because the video would get too long. I can make more if you want to. This was really cool to watch. This was an entire movie, and I can do this more. This video is, I think, the longest video I've ever made. And if you are okay with it, I hope you are. I can do more long videos, because I like it. It's, it's one topic we go in depth into, and I like to go into like that. I hope you do also. You can leave your feedback in the comments below. My friends, thank you for making me able to do this as a job. I love this so much. I love this. I love my work. And you are making it possible. The Patreons are making it possible. The people who get the stone and YouTuber cup and the stone and soldier hat are making it possible. Thank you. Also, give another chance to the Stone and Soldier Hat competition. I redid the layout, worked really hard on that actually, tried to make it pleasable for your eyes. So, give it a chance. Maybe take part in it. Get the hat and watch where the point goes. Thank you, my friends. Until my next video, stay cool and bye-bye.